Do you ever feel like your mind is your biggest obstacle? What if you could flip the limiting beliefs that are holding you back in just minutes? Stick around today because I'm going to reveal a powerful strategy that can radically alter your mindset and maximize your potential. In today's video, you're going to learn a simple yet powerful and effective strategy to quickly flip your limiting beliefs and steer your life toward success. Hello, powerful manifestors. Welcome to my channel. I'm Victoria Gallagher, the law of attraction hypnotist and number one bestselling author of practical law of attraction and the creator of the believe hypnosis app, which is designed to empower your manifestation journey using hypnotic techniques and guided meditations. And I'm here to help you tap into the power of your mind, align yourself with the manifesting conditions and successfully attract your dreams, your goals and a life you love. Today we are talking about a powerful and effective strategy that's going to help you to quickly overcome your self-doubt and move confidently toward your goals. So if you are ready to challenge those doubts and those old beliefs, leave a comment right now saying, I am ready for change. All right, so let's get into our limiting beliefs. What are they? What are limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs are those deeply held convictions that constrain our life in some way. They're usually at the subconscious part of our mind and they usually stem from our past experiences. So I want you to think about one limiting belief that you might have about yourself that's holding you back in some way and type that in the comments below because acknowledging that limiting belief is the very first step. Now, how do these limiting beliefs impact us? These beliefs can negatively impact all aspects of our lives, our career, our relationships, our personal growth, our health, and they create a negative feedback loop where we subconsciously sabotage our own success. Just to line up with the belief, the negative belief, we have to prove that it's right because the subconscious mind really is a matching mechanism and it tends to toss out anything that doesn't match up with what you believe. All right, so for example, if you are an entrepreneur and you're dealing with the well-known these days, imposter syndrome. Everybody's talking about imposter syndrome these days. This is that idea that you're not quite good enough. You doubt your abilities in some way. You feel like you're living a lie. You're not really living, you're not really qualified. What if people find out about you? That So a lot of people have this, this sense that they don't really deserve to make money doing what they love to do. And you might doubt whether you're actually good enough at what it is that you do compared to other people in the field. And so this might make you charge less for your services. Anybody relate to that? Is anybody not really making the money that they ultimately want to make and deserve to make? And you hesitate to maybe approach the bigger clients because maybe you feel like, oh, that person's just a little bit out of my comfort zone or out of my league. And you maybe you avoid expanding your business in some way. And so this kind of behavior is going to slow you down. It's going to slow down your ability to grow your business. It's going to eventually you're going to go broke because you're not going to make enough money because you're not charging enough. And so this kind of situation is, is, is a situation that holds you back and it's going to cause you to just feel less, less confident. And it's just going to maybe make other people, other people will notice that about you. Other people will notice that even though you have the skills, you know what you're doing, you have the knowledge, but if you don't have the confidence then it's going to just make other people less likely to work with you. And so each time you hold yourself back because of these doubts, and this just goes for any anything. It might be that you're, you don't feel like you're good enough to have that kind of relationship, or it might 
mean that you feel like no one in your family has ever been in good shape. And so you can't be in the, the shape that you want. Whatever it is, there's something that you've been holding on, believing about yourself, and it's holding you back. And every time you hold back, it just reinforces the doubt and it makes those feelings, those doubts even stronger. And it just keeps you in a self-fulfilling process prophecy. It just keeps you stuck in a cycle of never really achieving what you could achieve in your life or in your business. So it really starts now with identifying your limiting beliefs. You got to recognize that these beliefs, what these beliefs are, and that is really the first step to flipping those around. And some of the techniques that you could use to figure out what those beliefs are, if you don't really know right now, but you just know something's holding you back and you don't really know exactly what the belief is. So one of the techniques that you could use is journaling and you could literally just talk about why is it that I'm not able to achieve such and such and why why am I not able to achieve this success that I want in my business and usually if you journal about it long enough you're going to hear the answer doing some kind of any kind of self-reflection just listening to the voice inside of your head ask the question and then just get quiet and listen to the voice inside of your head so just you can you can even talk to somebody else about it. You could ask, what do you think my limiting beliefs are? So ask somebody and maybe they, sometimes people know you better than you know yourself. So there's just a bunch of ways that you could get in touch with what that belief is. That's, so the very first thing is you got to know what it is before you can even do this method. So the method is called the flipping method. And this technique involves first recognizing the limiting belief, then challenging the validity of that belief. Is it really true? And then consciously replacing that belief with an empowering belief. It's a really simple, but very powerful powerful approach to changing your beliefs. So what is one empowering belief? We talked about the limiting belief, but just what is one empowering belief that you would like to have? Uh, share that belief in the comments below. I'd love to hear what are those, those beliefs that you'd actually want. Maybe I can create a session of, around that in my, uh, in my hypnosis app. So here are the steps again. So first you identify the belief. It's also helpful to understand where did this belief come from? Then you dispute the evidence, all right? And then you replace it with a positive and empowering belief. So let's, let me just give you an example of how this actually looks. So changing the belief, for example, let's just say that one of the beliefs that you had is I'm not a good public speaker. Who here has ever wanted to, that's one of the biggest fears that people have. People would rather die than give a, <laughs> than speak in public. And I had that fear at one point myself even, and it wasn't that I wouldn't do it, but it, I didn't feel like I was good at it. And that there was a time that I felt that way. And I think, I think I'm still a work in progress. I don't think that I am the most succinct speaker. I, I recognize that about myself. And I don't think that's a limiting belief. I know I'm not very succinct. That is literally a thing that I have room for improvement on. So we're getting there. Anyway, so I digress. The very first thing is identifying the belief. So let's just say you feel like I'm not a good public speaker. You would literally just write that down and you would realize this belief is significantly hindering your professional growth. And then you would understand, well, where did this belief come from? So reflect on where did that belief even begin? Maybe it started from a bad experience that you had during a school presentation, or maybe it you know, happened from you, you just consistently avoid speaking situations because you just don't want to feel nervous and you, you're going to feel nervous. Everybody feels nervous when they get up and give a talk, but you just don't want to feel that way. So you avoid it. And that creates the feeling like, well, I'm not even any 
good at it. Could be somebody told you <laughs> that you're not very good at it. Maybe your parents or maybe a kid in school said you suck. It could be so many different origins, legitimate in your, your own made up idea or somebody else telling you that. Or maybe so many other people are afraid of that that you just decided, well, I'm gonna be afraid of that too. Um, so whatever it is, understanding that the origin, it just really helps to acknowledge that this belief is, is based on something that happened in the past. It's based on an event or an experience that is based on something that is not happening right now. It happened before, it's not current. And so now the next step, number three, is disputing the evidence. So now you wanna gather evidence that challenges this belief. This could include sometimes when you have successfully communicated, maybe you've successfully communicated to your partner about something. Maybe you've successfully communicated to at, at, in a group. Maybe you've successfully communicated in a meeting at work. There's dozens and dozens and hundreds and hundreds of, of times in your life, certainly, where you have effectively conveyed your ideas. So take a look at those. And you can also look at skills related to public speaking that you already do excel in. Maybe you excel in writing which is very related to speaking. Maybe you get your thoughts out on paper better than you do expressing them right off the top of your head. And this is something that can also just be a skill that you're good at. So you, if you're good at that, then you can map those skills into the skill of public speaking. All right. So, but anyway, what you want to do is just find any evidence that destroys the idea that you are not good at that and just find all kinds of reasons that tell you that you really, you really do, that that's not true, that it, that you, that this belief is not true. The final little uh, piece of this, which is the big piece, is really replacing whatever it is, whatever belief that you took out, now you can replace that with a positive and empowering belief. So develop a new concept, develop a new belief, such as I am capable of becoming an excellent public speaker with practice and preparation. You see, that is a realistic way it's not just saying to yourself, I am a good public speaker, but it's saying I'm capable of developing this skill just like anybody is. And with practice and preparation, I can become an excellent public speaker. And now you're focusing on being excellent. You're focusing on being good. And this focuses on improvement and it focuses on incremental successes, no matter how big or small. So that is ultimately how you go through the four steps of flipping your limiting belief into an empowering belief. Now, once you have created an empowering belief, it's just like planting a seed. You have to nurture and solidify that belief. So you have to actively seek out opportunities in this case to speak publicly. All right. In this case, you might join a public speaking group like Toastmasters, which is a wonderful way to build your confidence in a safe place because everyone's there working on their speaking skills. You can do live videos on social media. You can speak up more at meetings. Now, again, I just did this whole thing around one limiting belief of not being a good public speaker. So this can translate to any limiting belief. Just take and map across everything that I just said into what your limiting belief is, what the empowering belief would be. And each time you have positive experiences, you're building your confidence. You are reinforcing your new empowering belief. And repetition is really the key to making all of this work. The more you reinforce this new belief, the stronger it becomes. So what is one area in your life 
that you would like to apply this method. Let's go ahead and talk about this in the comments below. Let me know one area in your life that you have this limiting belief, you'd like to start creating a new empowering positive belief. Just write that in the comments below. And if you found today's video helpful, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more empowering content. Click the bell icon to stay notified whenever I release new videos. And that is how you can support this channel. So if you're also interested in using hypnosis to take on your limiting beliefs, like imposter syndrome, growing your confidence as an entrepreneur, maybe even becoming a powerful motivational speaker or a coach or podcaster or YouTuber. I have hypnosis sessions for it all. I love creating empowering content that helps you to believe in yourself. So my hypnosis app, Believe, is that tool that can help you with that belief. It offers all kinds of guided sessions that you can do anywhere from your phone, making it so easy for you to work on changing your mindset wherever you are, whenever you want. And by listening regularly, you're gonna be able to shift those limiting beliefs into more positive and empowering ones that are gonna help you to succeed in your business and in all areas of your life. So please be sure to click the link in the description to download Believe today. So remember, the only real limits are the ones that you accept. So start challenging those beliefs today and see how your life changes for the better. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Remember, every day is a new opportunity to make a positive shift in your life. So stay consistent, determined, disciplined, keep growing, and keep believing in yourself. And I will see you in the next video. Bye now.